I created the 3D coloring book to empower artists who are struggling with texturing in Substance Painter and to show them that anyone can create beautiful pieces of art with just a little bit of practice and guidance. Now, I truly believe that you can drastically transform your texturing skills and become the artist that you know you can be. No more stress, no more confusion. The 3D coloring book is a resource specifically designed to take the stress out of texturing and to give you the confidence that you need to texture any asset. And today is gonna to be no different. In the 3D coloring book workshop today, I'm gonna to be taking our members on a journey to show them how to create easily stylized smart materials that they can reuse for any project with wood, bricks, metal, bone, and a ton more. Now to grab the model, the blank substance painter file, the finished substance painter file, and the full tutorial, hop on over to the 3D artist coloring book and let's begin your texturing journey today. Now let's get started. Hey guys, this is Thomas from Stylized Station and welcome back to the 3D Coloring Book Workshop. And today I'm gonna to be showing you guys a very special topic, something that was highly requested. I'm gonna show you guys how to make some hand-painted style smart materials. So I've made a very, very simple smart material here and I just wanted to show you guys just how easy it is to create something like this. And on top of that, I've also added a cool little material that adds automatically adds paintbrush strokes and this is totally customizable and you can make, make these paint brush strokes look bigger, smaller, however you want. So I'm super excited about this tutorial. So let's go ahead and get right into it. You're going to learn a lot today. Okay. So once you've downloaded the blank substance painter file and you've poked around in the textured finished file itself, let's go ahead and actually start looking at this tutorial. So everything is broken up into four distinct sections. There are the boxes on the back of the truck, the bricks at the bottom left hand corner there there's the glass of the truck itself and then the entire body is contained in the pickup that's the actual body frame so most of this work is going to be done in the pickup texture set so that's where i'm going to focus pretty much this entire tutorial so let's go ahead and get started right away i think the first thing we want to do is the actual pickup frame itself and to keep everything nice and organized let's go ahead and add a folder and call it whatever we want. I'm just gonna call it pickup frame. So the first things first is let's get the base layer set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose a fill layer and drag and drop it into the folder. And first things first, let's make sure we get a nice color. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose a super bright red because with stylized art, there's nothing wrong with choosing really vibrant colors. Now the next thing we want to do is make sure that we've got the color and the roughness dialed in. Everything else we don't really need to change. So let's go ahead and bring the roughness up to anywhere above 0.7. And you can see as it moves up, you're removing the glossiness and the sheen. So I'm going to sit up about here. Let's say 0.87. It doesn't really matter. And you guys can play around with the values as you want. Um, with creating hand painted smart materials, it's super important that you keep the roughness very high. So you get that nice matte painting look. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be adding a gradient to the bottom of the truck that goes all the way to the top to bring your eye naturally to the rest of the truck in this area. So let's go ahead and add a fill layer and we're gonna right click, add a black mask, right click, add a generator and we're gonna add a position generator. So it's now filling in just from the top down with a white mask based on the color we specify. So let's go ahead and change this to mask so we can see and properly manipulate the mask that we're going to be working with. Now, I want everything to start from the bottom. So let's go ahead and invert it. So now the white is at the bottom and we can mess and pull back the mask itself to get the effect we want. So I want it to hit about halfway up and I want this part of the mask to be a little stronger. So I'm gonna up the contrast and maybe pull it up to here. So now we've got a nice strong mask and a strong gradient that's gonna be very powerful at the bottom of the truck. And that looks good to me. So let's go back and change the material. And now we can change the base color. So press Alt click to isolate 
the base color channel and let's choose a nice dark red and you can see this is around the red that we used and we go use the gradient we get a nice dark gradient at the bottom there just something like that and if you want to make sure and if you want to remove the lighting and so you only see the base color let's choose the base color channel and now you can see just how great that gradient is going to look so the tires are going to be black but you can see the, the mask is kind of kicking in on the bottom here and on the base so, and it goes to a nice bright red very vibrant red right at the top so that looks pretty good to me so now that we've got a nice looking gradient it's time to start adding some depth to the actual color itself so next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding some dirt passes along with some ambient occlusion so let's go ahead and do the ambient occlusion first so let's add another fill layer and we're going to add a black mask just like before and with our generator we're going to simply choose the ambient occlusion generator which is right here and it needs to be inverted as well because you can see the mask is covering the non-occlusion parts so go ahead and press invert and that looks a lot better so we're going to be using a very very dark color to fill in the edges and the parts of the truck that would actually normally be covered in shadow so let's rename this to AO and we'll go to the color alt click on the color and let's change the base color to something very similar to the gradient nice and dark so let's go ahead and click the flood fill or the fill and we'll click on that and there we go it's filled in you can't really see it right off the bat but when you toggle it on and off we've got this nice beautiful ambient occlusion that's generated on the edges and you can always mess around with it if you want but for me that looks pretty good you can always bring it in a little stronger like that and pull it out but that's great so now we've got our first layer of ambient occlusion now that we've got the ambient occlusion done we're not done yet with adding shadows and grunge and depth to it so there's one easy way to do that and that's with the dirt generator and I always recommend stacking up ambient occlusion and dirt to get a much more uh, a much deeper and more consistent feel so we'll be able to fill in the cracks even in here with the dirt generator so let's go ahead and do that let's add a fill layer black mask and we'll add a generator and we can just locate the dirt generator right here and that's going to give us much better micro detailing for the actual shadows so let's change the color and let's fill it in again and make it the same as we've been doing it before now obviously obviously this is way way too strong so the good thing about making smart materials that they are fully PBR so we can pull this back and isolate it and mess around with it as much as we want so I want it just so it's really starting to appear around the edges here so let's go ahead and go to the mask and let's try and pull back the dirt level to a point where it's really just starting to to creep up a bit and that looks pretty good and let's go to the base color and that looks pretty good so now you can see even with the ambient occlusion it was still missing that depth and now with the dirt layer it's added that just extra bit of grunge and still has enough um, or still doesn't add too much detail so that it doesn't look stylized anymore and by removing all of the color channels and keeping the roughness nice and high we actually maintain that nice hand painted look so even this on its own is a great looking hand painted base so now you can see that with the first basically four layers you guys have created something that's already a pretty great looking smart material and we only really have about two layers to go to finish this um, after those two layers I'm going to show you how to create those hand painted brush strokes and that's only two to three layers themselves so this is pretty simple and um, that's why I created this I want to show you guys just how easy this is and help you guys learn to make this so let's go ahead and create one of the next layers which is one of my favorite layers the lighting so let's go ahead and add a fill layer and this one's going to be very simple we're not adding a black mask this time we're going to make sure we switch the blending mode to soft light which is crucial or else this won't work we'll turn off everything except color and then we're going to right click and go ahead and add a filter right away so no black mask and in this filter choose the baked lighting filter and basically what it does is it simulates light onto the actual albedo map itself um, 
which is great for stylized art. So let's turn off the color as well. And now we can kind of start messing around with this filter as well, uh, because the result it gives right away isn't always the best. Now you can go ahead and start by just turning it down slightly, maybe down to 70% because it's a little extreme. And then you can actually mess with the colors itself. So you can turn up the sun intensity, which is the lamp that gets put right on top basically. And I kind of like it there. Let's go into the colors base color itself so we can see. And let's see what happens if we change the sun color a little bit. I do like that yellow. So let's maybe do that so we've got a bit of an orange tinge on there. That's very powerful. Let's turn it down. Great. And the sky intensity is a more all-encompassing color. But let's go ahead and keep it like that. And then the lights itself, I don't really recommend messing around with right now, but you can mess around with them and um, see if you can get some nice gradients on the piece as well. But we'll leave that for now. So looking at this, this is still pretty orange. So instead of just turning down the intensity, let's bring it back up and then let's just turn down the sun intensity. That orange is a little too strong for my liking. Now, you don't have to follow this exactly, like I've said before. Mess around with it and see what cool colors you can come up with. You don't even really need to texture this pickup red. Um, the base layer itself can really just be whatever color you want and then just base it off of, um, or just kind of tweak everything as you go. That's why I'm, I'm doing this for you guys. So let's go ahead and add the final layer. So normally I leave this part, or I, I normally do this part first right after the base layer, but since there's so much um, so much happening underneath. I want to make sure that this layer is right on top so it's nice and powerful and really sticks out. And that is the curvature layer. So let's go ahead and create a fill layer. Now the curvature layer is um, it's there to make the edges pop out. So all of the edges here, um, maybe on the wheels as well, everything's going to pop out which is very essential when it comes to stylized art. So I'm doing everything I normally do. Now let's add a generator and this time we're going to add the mask builder. No, we're not. We're going to right click and we're going to add not the mask builder, the mask editor. The mask builder is now legacy um, and the mask editor is what's being worked on now. So let's go ahead and do that. Now there's a lot of stuff you can do with the curvature uh, and with, with the curvature generator. So let's pull it back a little bit and let's go to the mask so we can see in better detail what we're working with. So balance, I think that looks pretty good like there. And another trick is if you really want to mess with the curvature in the edges, you can go into the curvature dropdown and press this arrow. And then now we've got this whole menu of, of details that we can start working with. So we can pull back the huge details, big details, and you can see now the bigger details are starting to get pulled back. Large, and that looks pretty good. Let's go to the base color. And that's still too powerful. Some of the edges are getting washed away. But everywhere else, it looks pretty good. So let's pull in some large. Now you guys can tweak this as much as you want as well. It doesn't really matter. I'm just doing it so I get it the way that I like it. And keep in mind, this here, um, these are all going to be metal. They're going to be a different texture. Um, so it's not that big of a deal the way it looks. And let's get a nice color. Let's choose the base layer. And you can see it's popped it in a little bit. And then let's maybe desaturate it just ever so slightly. So you can see like right in here, we've got a nice curvature that pops out. This is all going to be metal as well and same with this. But you can see the difference it makes. It just really makes the edges pop out and gives it that extra little stylized look. And I really like the way the orange looks on it. So now that that's done, feel free to go back, tweak everything, and you've already got a great looking material right, like this right here. Um, let me quickly show you how to wrap it all up. And after this, um, I think this part's gonna be on YouTube. The um, 3D coloring book guys, I'm going to show you how to make those hand painted strokes. So let's go ahead and right click this, create a smart material, and it should populate in your smart material right here. So it's saved as pickup frame. So now I can safely delete this 
and I now have a smart material saved in. So no matter which asset I pull in in the future, so all I have to do is drag it and drop it. And now this is automatically created and it's got everything so I can populate it. I can change values. We can do whatever we want. And now you can apply this material to every material moving forward. And that's the great part about Substance Painter because you can build this amazing library of pre-made and custom assets that you've already made yourself and it saves a ton of time. So basically once you've made something once, you don't really have to make it ever again. Like I've got a stylized plastic in here that, oh, it's only base color selected. Stylized plastic, that's not working for some reason so we'll ignore that, but you guys get the idea. So I hope you guys learned a lot and we're gonna continue on in the 3D coloring book and I'm gonna show you guys how to make those hand painted strokes and I'm gonna show you guys how to texture the rest of everything. So we're gonna get the silver details, the bricks, some stylized glass, the wood, and I'm gonna make all the fence and wood from PBR from scratch as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I just finished making the tutorial and completing it for you guys and it looks fantastic. We've got the completely finished smart material for the pickup truck, we've got all this beautiful, beautiful stylized metal. We've got stylized bone that we made. I showed you guys how to make um, this glass that's see-through and it's got some cool gradients on it. Um, the bricks as well, this is all PBR, zero hand painted. And the wood ended up looking fantastic. Uh, ended up looking so much better for basically just a bunch of cubes. None of this is hand painted, it was all done all completely done through PBR and Substance Painter. So if you want to get the rest of this tutorial and you want to be able to fully finish this, hop on over to the 3D Artist Coloring Book. I'm making new tutorials for this every week. It's going to be covering a ton of assets in a ton of different styles. And I'm super excited to see what you guys are going to create. So feel free to send your finished textured projects of this tutorial over to me at stylizedstation at gmail.com. And I'll probably share them for myself. I'll share them on social media. So that's it, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And I really hope that you guys sign up and enjoy the 3D coloring book as well. And check out all of the other tutorials that we have on there. I'll see you around.